What's up YouTube, this is the Dual Factory, back at it again with another deck profile. Um, this time it'll be Phantom Knights. Um, I originally had posted this on the channel for you guys, but it got taken down. Um, I'm still having issues with that, but I figured I'd just go ahead and remake the deck profile for you guys. Um, this is something I've been, I haven't had a lot of testing with, but I have been messing around with at my locals. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, half of the deck build has come from the build that Jeff Jones played. The other half is just all kind of tests and theory. Um, with that being said, I am going to try to bring you some tabletop uh, play testing, so that way you guys can see like how the deck operates, because not a lot of people are familiar with it yet still. And um, that way I can also get suggestions from you guys of what how the deck should be run. But I will get into the deck profile for you. So starting with the monsters, we have three of the Ancient Cloak. Um, Ancient Cloak, is, they all have graveyard. They all get their effects by being banished from the graveyard. But Ancient Cloak is the one that searches out your monsters. Um, so all the, uh, they all have some sort of searching effect or they have a foolish burial effect. So I only play the level threes and I max out on the threes. So he searches your monsters. Silent Boots is a hat tricker for the archetype as long as you control a Phantom Knight monster. So if you control Bright Sword, you can special summon it. But he searches your Fiendish Chain and your other trap cards such as the, I think it, it's the Phantom Knight's uh, Sword, Fog Blade, and Wings. So he searches the spells and traps. And then Ragged Gloves, he's the one that you banish to get Foolish Burial, any Phantom Knight card. Also, he whenever he's used for the XYZ Summon of a Dark Monster, the Dark Monster gains 1,000 attack and it's mandatory and it's once per turn. So he allows for some really neat plays. Especially with Break Sword. And that's it for the Phantom Knights. I play a total of nine onto the monsters. I do play the Speed Raid Engine, so I play three Terror Top. Uh, this basically makes your opening hands more consistent because it's a level three that summons for free and searches a copy of a Speed Roid, which is usually take Tom Borg or the Dice. So it gives you access to another three to get to a rank three. So that's why you play three of it. And then um, so far, I've been trying the one take Tom Borg and the one Triad Dice. Um, the take Tom Borg's good going first. Or second, because it gives you the option, with if you open the Terror Top, it gives you a free rank 3. And then the Tri Die Dice, it's a Necro Gardener, which is really nice, because this deck sometimes needs to protect your pl uh, board. Also, it's a tuner, so if you get stuck with like a Flying Sea or something like that, you can use it to make sure, so that's a neat play. And then, kind of for like the stuff I put in, like this is a separate engine, versus the actual build that uh, Jeff Jones topped with, and uh, Alexander Lizgaith, or you guys know him as Base Lolly. Um, I'm playing 3 Curry Bandit. Um, so what I notice in this deck is a lot of the times half the stuff that you draw you want in your graveyard anyway and then this deck already has a terrible going first anyway so I kind of wanted to make my opening hand going first a lot more consistent so I went ahead and put the three curry bandits because everything you mill like the spell or traps whether you add them to hand or not they're all going to do something in grave so we're trying this theory out um, it seems really bad because Veil is so popular but at the same time if it does resolve, it puts you so much further. It puts you in a better spot than what you would have been if you hadn't opened, say, like you opened uh, just a bunch of brickish cards, or you're opening no terror top and just that. It just it's a it's a a better standalone opening card than most cards in the deck. And then to complement the three curry bandits, I do play the one tour guide. Um, the unique thing about it is a level three fiend, so you can summon it off tour guide. And tour guides, other than like curry bandit. It's really like the only standalone card in the deck because everything else it has to be able to combo off with. So I wanted to increase those. And then to kind of go with like the turbo mill aspect, I am playing two card trooper. It does everything the deck needs. It mills the top three cards off the top of your deck as a cost so it doesn't get veilered. It's a level three floater. So that's why we go ahead and play it. And then I am playing the psychic engine. So I play one ghost ogre and I play one blue lair. Um, this is a tuner. It's also a decent hand trap. And then this is a never ending... Uh, Eat Tully target, so that's why I like that. And that's it for the monsters. Onto the spells, we play three e emergency teleport. More or less, this is just uh, another way to get a f another free level three body without using your normal summon to get your boards going. So that's why I like it. And it also bring, gives you access to a tuner. And then I play three twin twister. Um, this deck, even though it has all of its combo pieces played out of the graveyard and stuff like that, absolutely detests back row. So this is just another way to clear it. Plus it puts stuff in your graveyard. And then I play two one ofs. One Foolish Burial, and then one Reinforcements of the Army. Um, foolish, because you want everything in the graveyard, and Rhoda, because all the Phantom Knights are Warriors. And then onto the Traps. 
uh, for the archetype specific, we play seven. Um, I was playing nine at first, but then it seemed really cloggy to me, so I cut the other two swords down the two apiece. And I haven't seen any contradictions with it or anything like that, so I think I'm going to stick with the seven instead of the nine, but it's always subject to change. So we play three fog blade. This is the fiend's chain, and um, all the trap cards also have the ability to monster reborn. But as for the other abilities, this is Phoenix Chain, and it also makes it where that bonus monster can't attack, but it also makes it where the monster equipped with this can't be attacked either. So if you need to, you can also equip it to say like your Dante or something like that, and stall your opponent out. Um, and then for the other ones, we play two Phantom Knight Sword. The this one is the one that gives an 800 attack point boost, and the other trap card as well. It's uh, they both have the same effect. If a monster, would, if the monster equipped with it would be destroyed. Or uh, by a battle card effect, you can uh, it doesn't for that turn at least once. So it also saves your monsters. And then we play Phantom Knight's Wings. Uh, it does the same thing as the sword, other than it's not continuous and it's a 500 attack and defense point boost. However, I keep it well. Sorry, 500 attack boost. But keep in mind that the attack gains are permanent. So that's come up a couple times. And then I didn't like the Solemn Strikes in it at first. So right now I'm testing two breakthrough skills. Because it's also another minimal trap that you can play. And it's also it's big because it stops stupid floodgate monsters. Like if your opponent knows you're playing uh, Phantom Knights, then they're just going to make Dweller and try to lock you out. And this is an out to Dweller, so that's why I like it. And then I play the one Solemn Warning because it's the only Solemn card in this deck that I do like. Um, that's the main deck. It is 40. Like I said, this deck is still completely all theory and still needs more testing. So we'll see how that lineup works. And then for the extra deck, um, I play the one Trish because... Um, I do play the level 3 tuners. It is really easy to make in this deck, and it's also an out to, uh, what's it called? Flying C. Flying C. You hate Flying C in this deck. It's absolutely terrible. And then um, for the archetype specific XYZ, I do play 3 Breaksword. Um, this is the rank 3 Scrap Dragon. And then also in Phantom Knights, whenever this XYZ summon card is destroyed, so you can't just bring it back with one of the trap cards that has to be XYZ summoned, um, it targets two Phantom Knights with the same level in the graveyard, and then increases the level by ones. But for the rest of the turn, you can only special summon dark type monsters. So it gives you access to some generic rank fours that you can play that are actually really good in the deck. So three break sword, double Dante. This is your turn one XYZ you want to go into because it gets your graveyard started, especially with the curry bandits and the uh, card troopers. It makes the milling really good, and you get set up really fast. Um, we also play two Levier. This deck abuses it because all you're doing is banishing your level 3 monsters, so you just bring them back and just make huge pushes. Um, one difference is I am playing one Grand Pulse. Um, it's an MST, more or less, and a version of a rank 3, which is really good because sometimes you get stuck with stupid flood cards. Like at Locals, for example, sometimes you'll see Shadow Mirrors everywhere, and your deck hates Shadow Mirrors, so this is an out to it. It outs Soul Drain, it outs Macro. It, it just it outs a lot of cards, and it's unaffected by, like, the Shadow Imprisoning Mirror because of the water, so that's really good. And it's a 28 Defender. Um, I do play one Nightmare Shark because sometimes you can't get over your opponent's board, so you have to get around it somehow, and this is how you do it. Um, I do play the one Key Beetle as a target to be brought back with a Break Sword. Um, I also play one Evil Swarm Nightmare. I'm going back and forth between this and Thanatos. Um, I do like the Nightmare because... It does f effectively flood out your board, but at the same time, it doesn't really do anything as a 1950 defender. Or it comes out at 1950 attack if you bring it back with that glove, so that's something to keep in mind. But also, um, I think Thanatos would be a little more relevant because it comes out 3350 under Ragged Gloves, and it's unaffected by Monster Effect. So I might swap it out for that, but like I said, it's just going to need more testing. Um, I do play one Dark Rebellion Dragon. This is definitely a shoe, and I'm not taking out because it gets it can becomes 3,500 Ragged Gloves, and then it's going to become bigger if it targets a monster. That thing just becomes huge. And then the only other XYZ is I play two Utopic Futures. Um, this deck, its Cosmo matchup isn't terrible because of Ragged Gloves, but it's not the greatest either. So I make this because it's an out to dark story, and you can just keep taking their spaceships, and you can beat them with their own cards. Um, so that is the deck profile, guys. Always remember to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, please feel free to let me, uh, to let me know what you think I can do to make the deck better. Um, but yeah, as always, thanks for watching, guys.